The largest casino and landowner in Las Vegas aims to remain anonymous. They work behind the scenes, with you, the general public, not really understanding the pressure they've created that's driving the market. And in turn, hotel room rates, entertainment, and dining prices sky high in Las Vegas. But they aren't the only ones with an absurd level of investment on the Las Vegas Strip. Over them sits their masters, a company that owns a staggering 8.4% of everything on Earth. In addition, they also control over 30% of all the common stock of the major Las Vegas casino companies. When news broke in January of 2023 that a lawsuit was being filed against casino companies claiming they were working internet algorithms in order to artificially drive up prices, experts laughed the idea off. But in this video, I hope to show you why the chain of ownership in Vegas is no laughing matter. It's deep, it's twisted, and it just might be hurting you, the regular tourist. And not just here in Las Vegas, but across the vacation industry in general. Add on to this aggressive resort fees for so-called perks like in-room Wi-Fi and access to gym and swimming pool facilities, and it starts to feel like the average John and Jane Doe might just indeed be working against a stacked deck on the losing end of the equation. So what exactly is happening here? Well, in a way, it's what advertisers and marketers call the illusion of choice. The sense that you're in control, that you support one company or one brand over another because of loyalty or you just happen to like how they operate. Now, by now, you probably know that when you go to buy a product in a store, most of the brands you see are owned by a select few companies. Toms of Maine moved to New York when Colgate acquired it in 2005 for an adjusted price of $149 million. Burt has no more bees, or if he does, he sent them packing to Colgate in Oakland, California back in 2007 for an adjusted sales price of a staggering $1.3 billion. The point here is the illusion of choice has been a very real thing in the retail space for a very long time. Whether it's the Chinese company Lenovo selling Motorola phones or Mattel selling your kids toys labeled as Fisher Price, the illusion of choice is often all we're presented with. So if nothing we see in retail is real, who owns most of the interests in the Las Vegas Strip? The immediate answer for most would be MGM Resorts, Caesars, Wynn, and Las Vegas Sands. But that's the illusion of choice presenting itself to you. The real truth, as you will learn here, has more to do with shareholders, land ownership, and profit at any cost than it does with a competitive market for consumers. You see, in recent years, companies like MGM have begun to sell their land, and they aren't alone. After MGM unloaded Bellagio and Circus Circus to Blackstone and Phil Ruffin respectively, the race was on to raise as much capital as possible by offloading assets and buildings while simply running a gaming corporation on the inside. More sales followed, like the 2020 sale of the MGM Grand itself and Mandalay Bay. The Venetian and Sands Expo and Convention Center selling for more than $6 billion. The news of the sale comes almost two months after owner Sheldon Adelson's death. But that's not all. As recently as February of 2022, the oldest gaming company in Las Vegas, Las Vegas Sands Corporation, sold the Venetian for a staggering $6.25 billion. I should also mention right now that if you like this video and want more deep dives, a sub to this channel would be worth more than a million bucks to me. Be sure to click subscribe now. We're working on unraveling many past histories and mysteries surrounding Vegas. I hear David Copperfield has a very interesting past, and that's all I can tell you for now. But who are these companies actually selling to? Who out there in a post-COVID world actually has the funds to spend more than the entire annual GDP of some entire nations on a piece of land and building on the Las Vegas Strip? Well, the answer to this is simple. It's never really been a secret. But the people at the top, the one company that has the biggest interest in this twisted web of the Las Vegas Strip, is playing both the long and the short game, as we will soon reveal. Now, before we get to who actually owns Las Vegas and because we need to pay our bills like anybody else, I need to mention our channel sponsor here, which ties nicely to this video about corporate greed and ownership. You see, we've teamed up with one of the very last family-owned companies in America making everyday products that we all use. Stuff we find in the kitchen and bathroom, you know, the boring stuff. It's a perfect alternative to the Walmarts and Amazons of the world. And plus, all the products are free of harsh chemicals and better for the environment. So hit the link in the pinned comment or just visit the website below Drop your information and learn more about how you can switch away from big corporations and the illusion of choice too. So what about the illusion of choice? How does that exist in Las Vegas? Who really owns what? Well, let me explain. In 2017, a company called VC Properties began buying the land of buildings of key Las Vegas casino players. First, it was Harris from Caesars, followed by the Venetian Complex in 2022. 
and then taking on even more real estate on the Strip, buying the land and buildings of both the MGM Grand and the Mandalay Bay. This transaction cost VC a staggering $17.2 billion. And if you're curious, that's more than the entire annual GDP of the country of Jamaica. This set up a cycle for the now tenants in the buildings, the casino operators. In the past, owning land was an asset to borrow money on, which meant they would focus solely on increasing profits made by tourists staying in the rooms, seeing shows, and gaming in the casinos. Now suddenly, the casinos found themselves as renters, beholden to landlords and subject to lease agreements that any normal person would find absolutely absurd. Each of these deals created something called a Real Estate Investment Trust, or a REIT for short. And in these deals, rents are increased at 2% per year to be paid by the casino and hotel operators to the new landlord or VC. Motivation for casino operators to make higher and higher profits has never been more extreme. And before we get to the January 2023 lawsuit claiming price fixing, it's important to take a look at the other key big player on the Las Vegas Strip, a company so large they own literally 8.4% of the entire world's GDP value. A company that owns literal trillions of dollars locked up in the likes of Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, McDonald's, and ExxonMobil, just to name a few. That company is called Vanguard, which according to its website is, quote, changing the way the world invests, even if they may be seemingly doing it by controlling the way that companies operate in general. Now, over time, Vanguard has amassed a controlling interest in a collective 32.5% of all the common shares of MGM Resorts International, Caesars Entertainment, the Wynn Corporation, and even Las Vegas Sands Corporation. That's a collective $5.4 billion invested across the industry on the Las Vegas Strip. This means that Vanguard has a direct interest in seeing these casinos post higher profits year after year. Higher profits from casino stocks keep the investors buying into Vanguard as an investment happy, gains them more investors, and allows them to purchase more things globally. Coupled with the prospect of having to pay higher rents on their leaseback agreements to property owners like VC, and the possible real story about hotel room price fixing in Vegas may start to come starkly into focus. And of course, if the story ended there, we'd finish off the video with a disclaimer about everything you're hearing is just that, hearsay and unprovable. But unfortunately for us, the story does not end there. Vanguard doesn't just own $5.4 billion of stock across the big casino companies in Las Vegas. Instead, Vanguard sits atop a hill in Las Vegas, owning a 14% stake in VC, the landowners itself, with a total of $4.4 billion invested into the same company that owns the very land and buildings the largest casinos in Las Vegas operate out of. Vanguard profits when VC shares increase in value. VC grows by offering deals to Vegas casinos to essentially become renters in their own buildings, paying to use the buildings they built years ago accumulating more and more valuable real estate and Vanguard profits again when the casinos post higher profit quarter after quarter by growing their business and profits with, among other things, higher room rates across the board. And that, my friends, opens up an important question. When we consider the new pressure for casinos to pay rents to landowners and satisfy their largest shareholder, Vanguard, is the lawsuit put forward accusing the major casino operators of allegedly colluding to set hotel rates sky high really that preposterous? No, I'm going to let you be the judge of all of this, but keep your eye out on this one. The lawyers that brought the suit forward claim they have some evidence that will be truly surprising and eye-opening, and no one yet knows what will come of the case. So I thank you for watching and sharing this video, and if you like this channel, please do subscribe to get more deep dives like this. And hey, if you love documentaries, please subscribe to our new channel, Dark Truth Documentaries, for a look at the world outside of Las Vegas. Links are in the first pinned comment at the top of this video. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Steven, and I'm not leaving Las Vegas.